Okay, so once you have done your brainstorming and your research and put together a set of ideas for solutions uh, for the problem that you're investigating, it's time to do the tricky work of assessing those ideas and sorting through them and seeing which ones will work and which ones won't. So this section is called Considerations, uh, and it's about the things you have to consider as you go forward. And I'm going to focus on four of these, uh, client capacities, alternatives, costs and benefits, and feasibility. And I will take each of these separately. The first of these considerations is client capacities. That is, the question of what your client is actually capable of doing in a given situation. Many years ago, I was the judge for an international studies model UN uh, at a university in India. And one of the problems that many of the delegations had is that their proposed solutions to the problems that they raised had to do with the UN engaging in activities that it does not have either the authority to do, uh, does not have a mandate for, um, or doesn't have the power to enforce if it did try to do them. This is the kind of thing that you need to be very, very careful about. You don't want to suggest solutions that your client is incapable of, uh, of putting into play. So you want to be asking, you know, what kinds of resources are available to your client? Does your client have the kinds of personnel resources, economic resources, uh, knowledge resources, skills resources, technological resources that could be deployed in order to uh, achieve this goal. The second thing that you want to consider uh, among client capacities is what kinds of things that this particular client has done in the past. It's not impossible that your client would do something entirely novel, uh, but it is most likely that things that they've done in the past means that they have certain kinds of resources and expertise in, the, in, in employing these kinds of solutions. And so uh, solutions that you come up with that are uh, in line with or piggyback on or build on things that they've done in the past are going to be uh, easier for your client to implement. Next, you want to consider alternatives. What are some of the possible alternative courses that your policy could take? What are some directions it could go? What are some variations on the policy that um, might be that you might want to consider? Then we get to the place where you look at your various alternative uh, solutions, and you begin to think about the costs and benefits of each. One of the things that you'll want to think about in this context is which outcomes are the most uncertain. That is which of your policy recommendations are most likely to lead to a uh, to a uh, are, are you're most unsure will lead to any kind of a, of a successful uh, outcome for your client uh, what costs and benefits will result from different outcomes and this doesn't only have to be uh, considered in terms of economic capital, it can be concern, uh, it, it can be thought about in terms of any of the issues that different uh, stakeholders have. Um, what status gains might there be or losses uh, if the outcomes are unsuccessful? What gains might um, people be risking uh, economically, what gains might they be risking socially, what gains might they be risking politically, um, what kinds of potential uh, benefits and costs are there um, for the different kinds of outcomes that you're looking at. Then you can flip the question and ask which outcomes are the least uncertain, you know, which are the most obvious, uh, obviously going to come out the way that you would predict, which, are, which give the most predictable um, positive outcomes, even if these are uh, have less uh, long-term benefits or, or less um, uh, overall strategic benefits. 
Uh, and then what you want to look at is, uh, when you're looking at your various alternatives, is uh, do these um, uncertainties of, of outcome involve money? Uh, do they involve the power of rival groups? Um, do they engage the prestige of various persons or organizations? So these are costs and benefits I was talking about earlier in terms of economic and social and political. So what you're going to be doing is looking at all of the different outcome possibilities and looking at um, what your client risks and what your client potentially gains. And to do that, what you have to do is you have to consider what the other stakeholders stand to benefit and, uh, and to lose, and then to consider what effects their gains and losses might have on you. It doesn't do any good to have a a positive outcome that leads a neighboring country to go to war with you. Finally, you want to look at feasibility. That is, what is the realistic likelihood of this particular outcome being uh, approved by your client and being implemented by your client uh, in order to achieve uh, the results. That is, you may be able to come up with a solution that is just a whiz-bang, uh, and you can see how this is really going to solve the problem that faces your client, but it's politically unfeasible for your client to be able to implement this. It would lead to you know, your client losing the next election, or your client would never be able to get the funding for it from the uh, sources that fund most of their projects. You know, for whatever reasons, it's not feasible. So, uh, so you want to think about the various kinds of ob of obstacles to um, uh, to the ability to put a policy into place. What outcomes face the greatest political obstacles? Uh, what, um, in order to implement uh, a particular solution, uh, whose cooperation will be needed and what is the likelihood of getting that cooperation? How will the interests of the various essential actors be affected? We talked about this already a little bit. You know, uh, given all the different stakeholders, how will their uh, stakes in the case, the, what they what they risk to lose and what they uh, seek to gain, how will those uh, things be affected by your solutions, and what are the consequences of that? That is, do these uh, do these other stakeholders have any capacity to uh, keep the outcome from being uh, impl the, the solution from being implemented? Okay. Uh, finally, I just want to very quickly go over one kind of chapter structure. Uh, you don't have to follow this, but this uh, fits with um, the handout that I gave you at the beginning of the year. And that is uh, that as you move into Chapter 3, you want to talk about the criteria that you're going to use for choosing um, your recommended alternative, the specific solution that you've chosen among the, all the ones that you generated. You then want to talk about your specific recommended course of action, your strategy for implementing the solution, and then finally, you want to go through a strategy for managing any foreseeable problems and consequences. If you think about the, uh, if you think about the Kashmir uh, situation, um, which I uh, talked about in um, the earlier uh, earlier in the year, uh, we can see all of these things. Um, play out in that slideshow. So for example, I included a slide about the criteria by which uh, we were going to choose the, um, uh, by which we were going to choose the particular uh, solution that we, that we chose. Um, I then uh, offered a specific um, uh, implementation policy uh, in terms of uh, recommendations, what the members of the House should should do. Um, I described the specific uh, scenario um, that uh, we would use. 
uh, I gave the advantages and disadvantages of it. And so, you know, all of the pieces were there, uh, except the last one, managing the uh, foreseeable consequences. And in that case, um, what I did was, uh, the, the, the paper that the slideshow is based on does in fact have uh, management of a, a list of, of uh, you know, potential consequences of following this plan uh, and strategies for managing them. Um, the most important of which, as I recall, was um, issues about uh, if congressmen engage with Kashmiri separatists, you know, how will that look to India and Pakistan, and then you know, how, can that be, uh, how can that be dealt with. So these are, these are the things you need to be thinking about as you complete Chapter 2 and move on to Chapter 3. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, as always, you know, come to class with uh, some thoughts on the um, uh, answering the three questions uh, that we ask after each of these. And what was the most interesting thing about this lesson? Uh, what questions did this uh, lesson raise that it didn't answer for you? And what is one thing that you got from this lesson that you can see you will be able to directly apply to your project? And I look forward to seeing you in class.